Welcome to Sunday School for July 3rd, 2022, for ages 25 and older. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is Samuel administers justice. Today's Bible basis is coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3-11, through 11, and then verses 15-17. to 17. The Bible truth says, God hears the prayers of the righteous. The memory verse says, And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And that's 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 9. The lesson aim says, By the end of the lesson, we will know the power of prayer and the purpose of praying for justice. Since God's call for justice in our community and pray for justice in our community, the country. Today's lesson overview. Life need for today's lesson. To apply the power of prayer for God's justice in our communities. The Bible learning says to learn how Samuel used the power of prayer to bring God's justice to his nation. The Bible application says to begin to understand how prayer is a tool God gives us to bring his will on earth as it is in heaven. The lesson scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 7, beginning at verse 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtoreth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him wholly, and he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth, and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah, and drew water, and poured it out before the Lord, and fasted on that day, and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. And Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord, our God, for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines, and discomfited them, and they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah, and pursued the Philistines, and smote them, until they came under Bethkar. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life, and he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel, and Gilgal, and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. The biblical definitions for today's lesson. Pray and send. Pray, to plead, to intervene, to interpose, to ar arbitrate or even judge. Send, miss the mark, or it could mean aired. Light on the word. Samuel was a judge, prophet, and priest who was obedient to God. He was familiar with the power of God. Samuel knew that the Israelites were worshiping false gods. They were not committed to the true and living God. The Israelites had suffered defeat by the Philistines when they had tried to use the power of the Ark of the Covenant to gain victory in battle. The Lord had given the children of Israel strict instructions concerning the Ark. Instead of keeping the Ark in the most holy place, 
They were disobedient by moving it to the battlefield. Earlier, God had killed the men of Beth Shemesh because they had gazed upon the ark. The Israelites had experienced 20 years of sorrow because they had not repented of their sins. Samuel urged the Israelites to repent and called them to meet him at Mizpah so that he could pray on their behalf. The Israelites believed that God had left them, but they did not do anything about it. Samuel urged them to make a change, to repent. Life need for today's lesson. The aim says that your students will see through Israel why they must repent from sin and walk in obedience to God's word. The introduction says, Samuel. Samuel was the son of Elkanah and Hannah. He served as a prophet, judge, and priest. He was born in answer to the prayers of his barren mother, Hannah. Hannah gave Samuel to Eli, the high priest at Shiloh, for dedicated service to God. When Samuel was dedicated to God, he listened to God. Samuel was the last judge in Israel, and he encouraged the Israelites to commit themselves to God and serve him only. Mizpah. The name means watchtower or lookout. Samuel called the Israelites to come to Mizpah to pray and fast in sorrow for their sins. Mizpah was the capital of Judah after the fall of Jerusalem. Later, Saul would be chosen at Mizpah as Israel's first king. Saul had the blessings, but not the approval of God and Samuel. Ashtaroth, the name of the Canaanite goddess of fertility, sexuality, and war. She was the companion of Baal. Ashtaroth worship usually involved prostitution. The ground was believed to be fertile when she was worshiped in sexual rituals. The Bible learning says that your students will understand the importance of turning away from anything that does not please God. Lesson point one, a nation in sin. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3-7 through 7 of our lesson text in review. Eliezer, whose name means God is power or God is help, had been selected to take care of the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark was taken to a city named kerjath Jerem, which was near the battlefield because the Israelites wanted to be victorious in battle. Unfortunately, their faith was focused on the Ark of the Covenant, not on God. Therefore, they believed it would bring them victory if it was nearby when they fought the Philistines. In essence, the Ark had become an idol for them. God himself should have been the focus of their faith, not the Ark, because God will not tolerate such misplaced faith. They were defeated. Because of this defeat, the Israelites realized that God was no longer blessing them. They needed to repent and return to God. Samuel, who was judge, called the assembly at Mizpah. He directed the Israelites to pray and ask God for forgiveness. Samuel leads Israel to repent. Verses 3-7 through seven of our lesson text in review. The Ark of the Covenant was returned to Israel and brought to kerjath Jerem, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. Afterward, Samuel, functioning as judge, prophet, and priest, and king over God's chosen people, sets forth the condition for deliverance, whereby covenantal fellowship may be restored with the true and living God. That covenantal fellowship had been broken because of their sin. The phrase in verse 3, with all your hearts, in Hebrew is meaning seat of emotions and passions, the seat of courage. As judge, Samuel wants the Israelites to give their hearts back to the one true God. He guides the house of Israel through the prescription of consecrating themselves before God. As God's chosen people, 
They must walk in obedience to the stipulations in order to receive his promise of mercy and favor. Notable scripture, Exodus chapter 19, verse 5. You can write those down in a journal to keep track of where you are in Sunday school. First then, they must repent and turn from worshiping their detestable idols. The word Ashtaroth is the plural in Hebrew for Ashtaroth, the goddess of fertility and sexual union. Consequently, there were sexual rites surrounding her worship at her many shrines in the land of Canaan. God fashions through test and discipline the hearts and minds of his people as they turn toward him after a period of estrangement because of the rebellion and apostasy during which the promise of blessing and protection is deferred. The Israelites return to their God as prodigals, not just agreeing to abide by the dictates of God's law, but wholeheartedly committing themselves to have no other God and to serve him only. They readily comply with Samuel's call to repentance. Balaam is the plural form for the son of Dagon, the God of the sky, who brought forth thunder and rain to fertilize the earth. Of the many strange gods, Baal and Ashtaroth were perhaps the most popular and therefore the most prevalent. Samuel directs the people to gather at Mizpah that he might intercede for them before God. Mizpah, several miles north of Jerusalem, is a familiar setting. It was the place of national assembly where the people of Israel conferred to bring the Benjamites to justice for the atrocity committed against the concubine of a Levite. Notable scripture, Judges chapter 20, verse 1. Mizpah would also be the place for the national convention of all the tribes of Israel at which Saul would be elected king and it would become the capital of Judah after the fall of Jerusalem. Notable scriptures, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 17, 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 21 through 24. Verse six says, and they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said there, we have sinned against the Lord, and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah, that the people would pour, pour water on the ground is an acknowledgement that they deserve to be cursed for violating the terms of the covenant. They had sinned. In Hebrew, the word sin means miss the mark, to bring into guilt or condemnation or punishment. But underlying this act is the appeal for mercy and the knowledge that God honors a contrite heart that knows its bankruptcy. He is a merciful God who says that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And that's found in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. But he also provides a legal refuge with Samuel as his leader and judge of Israel at Mizpah, whereby he remains true to his word. Some transgressors find refuge by the means of grace he provides. Thus, the people fasted and confessed their sin. The word fasted means abstain from food. The Israelites felt compelled to also abstain from food in acknowledgement of their sin and repentance. Perhaps the Philistines sensed an opportunity now that all the Israelites had gathered at Mizpah to decimate the Israelites once and for all, or perhaps they felt threatened and mobilized their army. Certainly, the reality of the attack of the enemy becomes more evident when God's people turn away from and sin turn away from and against the evil influence of the world. God's way is never without opposition and challenge. 
In any case, the people are afraid. Fear is the potential enemy within because it attempts it tempts us with getting momentary expediency of relief without waiting on God. Question 1. What did Samuel call the people to do in order to receive deliverance from the Philistines? Write down your answers. Light on the word. Victorious through prayer. The Philistines knew that the Israelites were not gathered at Mizpah for a religious observance. They su suspected that the Israelites were united in an uprising. The Philistines planned to attack the Israelites, who wanted Samuel to continue to pray for them. The Israelites wanted Samuel to pray for their victory. At Aphek, they had depended on the ark for victory. Now the Israelites depended on the power of God for victory. Lesson point two, God executed justice. First Samuel chapter seven, verses eight through 11, and then verses 15 through 17 of our lesson text in review. The Philistines had endured a final defeat at the hands of God. There were no other battles between the Israelites and the Philistines when Samuel was judge. Because of the Israelites' obedience, then God executed justice through Samuel. Like the Philistines, we may need to remember the personal victories that God has given us. When we are experiencing difficult moments, the memories will help us to endure. When we remember the victories that God has given us, we can endure the present suffering with confidence. We have faith that God has already given us the victory if we endure. Samuel leads Israel to victory, verses 8-11 through 11, and then verses 15-17 through 17 of our lesson text in review. The people look to and beseech Samuel, God's provision and chosen instrument, as mediator on their behalf. Samuel, in this sense, is a type of Christ. And the deliverance sought from the Philistines foreshadows the greater deliverance and salvation affected in the person of Christ. Acting as priest, Samuel sacrifices a lamb. The stage is set. The Lord's face and the promise of his mercies are no longer eclipsed by the iniquity of his people. When Samuel cries out, God accepts and answers his prayer. The Philistines are poised for attack. But the Lord's hand against the Philistines is sure, swift, and unmistakable. They were smitten before Israel. The Israelites, as they had done so many times before, from the day of their liberation from the hand of Pharaoh, see the miracle of what the Lord has done. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Notable scripture. Psalm 24, verse 8. So it is when the battle is the Lord's, and all that is left for the Israelites to do is to pursue the scattered Philistines and slay them. 1 Samuel 7, verses 15 through 17. Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life, and he went from year to year in circuit to Bethel and Gilgal and Mizpah, and judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house, and there he judged Israel, and there he built an altar unto the Lord. God won the battle for the Israelites, and he used Samuel until Samuel's death to continue to judge the Israelites. In Hebrew, the word judged means ruled, governed, decided about a controversy, ex exercised judgment. Therefore, Samuel administered justice when he helped the people to repent and turn their hearts back to the true and living God. Question two, what did God do in response to Samuel's prayer and sacrifice? And what was the result? Write down your answers. Light on the word, follow God, no excuses. The Israelites desired to remove any obstacles or sins that had led to their defeat and subjection by the Philistines. They needed to reaffirm their covenantal loyalty to God, 
to receive his blessings. Samuel prayed to God on the Israelites' behalf, and God saved them. He brought justice. As with Samuel, our commitment to God should be continual. If we are distracted and place anything before God, we should seek him and repent. When we follow God, there will be distractions, but we must focus on him. We can easily make excuses, but we must follow God. When we seek God daily with a sincere heart, we can endure and keep our focus on him. The Bible application says that your students will recognize God's love and respond by living a life that pleases him. As humans, we live in a world of sin. As believers, we serve a loving God who, ne who hears our prayers and knows our need for help. When we are disobedient, we cannot stay in our current state. We must make a change. We must repent, turn from our sin, and return to God. If you know someone who has stopped seeking God's guidance, pray for that person. Encourage him or her to return to God. Students' responses. That your students will seek God at all times and encourage others through prayer. Seek God at all times. The standards of the world are different from God's standards. Remember that God has complete control. Therefore, we can be victorious in all situations. Success defined by the world's standards cannot compare with success as a child of God. While we live in the world, we can be strengthened to endure difficult situations by associating with others who will encourage and pray for us. Seek out a Christian group that has community involvement or support a community group that encourages those who are alone or homeless. We receive strength when we pray for others and encourage them with our actions and lifestyles. Seek to help those in need by so doing. You are serving God. When you join a group that prays and seeks to help those in need, you will stay encouraged to do God's will. Father in heaven, I pray, we pray, to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. We pray to be more fervent and strategic in prayers for ourselves and others, and quick to repent of our sins or anything that does not please you. We seek to have a heart that is tender to you, and that we walk in obedience to your commands. We also pray for our communities and our country, and our countries, to put away our idols and turn our faces back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Dig a little deeper. Racial justice became a catchphrase even in evangelical churches in 2020. And many believers awoke to the evidence of police violence against communities of color. The church wanted to pray about the issue, but found it difficult to articulate the godly position. For this purpose, excuse me, we're going to go right into the daily home Bible readings. For Monday, read, the topic is Repent and Turn. Read Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 25 to 32. Tuesday, the topic is an earnest petition. Read 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. Wednesday, the topic is a gift to the Lord. Read 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 11 through 21. Thursday, the topic is a voice in the night. Read 1 Samuel Chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. Friday, the topic is a trustworthy prophet. Read 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 15 through chapter 4, verse 1. Saturday, the topic is a revered prophet. Read Psalm 99. And on Sunday, the topic is a faithful judge. Read 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 3 through 11 and then verses 15 through 17. The end. God bless you, and thank you for joining me today.